Hello everyone and welcome to a Glassnode product video where we're looking at the back testing tool which we've just released. It's come into Workbench itself. This is a really powerful tool that allows you to test strategies and portfolios using a whole series of input data. Um, and really it's been distilled down to a fairly simple format of just an individual input signal, which can be a combination of essentially any metrics that are available in the Workbench tool. So in terms of backtesting a workbench, we're going to explore just a couple of different examples. Some of these really kind of build up the story over time so you can see how this function actually works. So we'll give a bit of an overview of the actual function itself and what the inputs are. We'll then go over everything ranging from a HODL only strategy is kind of like a baseline input. We'll then move on to doing a long only strategy just using simple moving averages as a crossover. We'll then look at a long and short strategy using on-chain data. In this case, we're going to be using SOPA. And then we're going to look at a combined signal, which actually says, do we have a crossover and do we have a SOPA signal? So you can kind of see how a couple of these constructions get put together, um, which should open up the, uh, the door for you know, other things to start experimenting and playing with. So the actual function itself that you'll find inside Workbench is fairly simply backtest. Um, now it takes five different inputs. Um, the first one is the simulated price. So if you're looking at Bitcoin, for example, this would be the Bitcoin price, if you're trading Ethereum or even the ETH BTC ratio, this metric here would be input as whatever the price you're looking to trade off. Now the first function, this one here is the input signal. And we'll spend a lot of time in the examples exploring this, but essentially this is a function that um, at zero indicates in fully cash, at one, it would indicate 100% long. At at minus one, it would indicate 100% short. Now we also can apply leverage in this instance if you were to do it by two or three. Essentially, this input signal is, um, it's a multiplier on the simulated price. So in the instance where the simulation is saying a value of one, the overall portfolio value, which we'll touch on in a second, will essentially follow price one to one. At two, it will follow price two to one. At negative two, it will be inverse at 200% of the current price movements. So it's essentially taking the simulated price and multiplying it by the input signal relative to the account size. Now we also have a starting timestamp in this format. You will find this in the, uh, in the function guide, which you'll see in the description below. Um, we then also have the account size. So this is essentially the portfolio value that will be traded along the multiplication of that simulated price. So this is the base account size. If this value was $1,000, that $1,000 will fluctuate via the multiple of this price according to the input signal. And there is also a relative fee per trade. So each time the volume changes, um, there will be a fee um, that can essentially be simulated. This can obviously be set to zero if you want to simulate just the, the, the raw performance. But for strategies that are jumping in and out of positions, um, then this will start to build up. So we do have a tool in here to actually monitor and, uh, and regulate those fees. So let's get stuck into Workbench and we'll step through an example going all the way from a simple HODL only strategy all the way through to a combined uh, on-chain and off-chain strategy. So the simplest format of a backtest here is purely looking at a buy and hold type setup. And really what I want to explore here, because it's it's obviously fairly, uh, fairly rudimentary how this is set up, um, is a bit about the construction of these workbenches and certainly some tips that I find uh, work quite well. So there's a couple of traces here. Obviously, we've got our price chart here in gray. But importantly, down the bottom here, you'll see we have what we call our HODL signal. This is the input value that's going to that second parameter of our workbench function um, for backtesting. So we've essentially put in a formula here, which is just price over price, which is obviously going to return a time series of one. Um, that is the same length and, uh, and duration as our price chart. We're essentially saying that when the backtest is running, we will be fully allocated at that time. Now, you'll also note here that I've got this bar, which is set to one, and it's squeezed quite far down on the chart. You'll find this useful if you want to plot out where your signal is. We often do this where we have a second formula also assigned to Y2, the same Y axis as our signal. This one here is set to a value of 10. If, for example, we wanted to change this to a value of five, you would see that we can essentially change the height of where we want that signal to sit. So this is a trick that we will often use. You'll often see uh, workbench charts that we build with a dash parameter. This is essentially going to squeeze down your signal and get into a nice visual format. The trick is just making sure it's on the same Y axis. So moving on to the actual backtest function itself, you can see that the input function here is M1, which is going to follow our price. 
Our F1 is going to follow the HODL signal, which is essentially one at all times. We can see that we're starting this simulation at uh, the 1st of January 2022, uh, sorry, 2020, and our portfolio size is $1,000, and we have that same trading fee. So as you can see here, this is essentially going to simulate a $1,000 position, how it essentially performs over the course of that time. So over this process, that $1,000 account size will follow price at a one-to-one -one ratio. Essentially, it will uh, it will move with that um, uh, with prices. And we've also got a model here showing the amount of BTC held, right? The, the Bitcoin size of the actual position, which is simply the back test divided by price. And it's showing us the initial buy value. Um, was about 13.8 uh, million sats. So we can see that this is essentially our BTC value, which is flat, and it is simply following the price chart all the way through. So setting up for a, our first kind of strategy, um, this is the input structure, just so you can see what we're doing here. Um, we're using just a very simple 20, 50 day uh, moving average crossover strategy. So we have here, we're using our simple moving average formula on price um, for 20 days. We have a second one here at F2, which is our simple moving average for 50 days. Now, what we've got set up here is that same. We've got one, two, three formulas, which are all capturing the different scenarios. Um, we've got our 20 day moving average is above our 50. So you can see periods where the red curve is above the blue curve. We've essentially got an if statement. If F1, which is our 20 day moving average is greater than F2, our um, 50 day moving average return a value of one, else return a value of zero. Now we do have a second trace here. This is actually not gonna be used in our next simulation. It's more so just to visualize what's going on. We essentially have the inverse. If it is less than or equal to, then return a value of one. So we can essentially see when the, in a long only strategy, when it would be fully invested during these green bars and when it would be in cash during these red bars. So it's more for a, a visualization tool there. So bringing that across into an actual backtest scenario, now we will use in the orange curve, the HODL only, basically that same buying location that we had back on the 1st of uh, January, 2020. This is essentially this orange curve down here, you can see at the top, um, I don't have the bar chart turned on, but this is essentially saying for the HODL only strategy, it's going to be one for the entirety of this backtest. And this is here, HODL backtest set to F1, which is our HODL signal. Now, in instances when our 20-day moving average is above our 50, we've essentially got the if-then statement. We've nested it here. So rather than having the 50 and the 20 um, as an individual formula, we've actually put in here, if the 20-day moving average is greater than the 50-day moving average, return one, else return a value of zero. So for our simple moving average back, um, back test, we're taking the same input of price M1, F3 is then our simple moving average crossover signal, which will only be one during um, periods where this is green and zero otherwise. Same starting date, same $1,000 account size, same trading fees. And you can see periods during these major sell-offs where the 20 moves below the 50, that it essentially moves to a position of cash. And the back test scenario essentially is keeping the portfolio value higher during those drawdown periods. So it's a very, very simple strategy, but really trying to show how this system actually works. Now, of course, things get a little bit more exciting than just doing simple moving average crossovers. So here what we've got is brought in a, a crowd favorite on-chain metric, which is SOPA, which is effectively the amount of profit being realized by all the coins spent that day. So values greater than one is indicating that the market is realizing a profit. And if it's below one, it means it's realizing a loss. Now, just to clean up the signal a little bit, we've actually put this onto a seven day exponential moving average just to make it a little bit cleaner. Um, but what we can essentially see here is our SOPA signal is looking at when SOPA on a seven day moving average is greater than one, return a value of one, when it's below return a value of zero. So we can see that typically speaking, during late stage bears, we get these periods where the market is essentially puking out. We've got um, many investors that bought coins much higher in the cycle, um, and most of that transaction activity is at a loss. So we typically see that SOPA will go down below one, particularly on a moving average basis, for extended periods of time during bear markets. So we can see here that our SOPA backtest, which is again taking F3, as our input formula, is essentially getting into cash as those losses start to get realized on chain. 
Um, and it's essentially picking, picking up a majority of the positive price performance and looking for when that strategy actually blows up and uh, so heads below one. Now, what we want to do here is essentially look at that from both sides. So I have two different signals here. This is an example of a little bit more complex, but basically a long or short. At no point in this strategy is it supposed to be in cash. It's purely looking at if SOPA is above one, then long. If SOPA is below one, then short. Just trying to demonstrate how the backtesting tool works in both directions. So we have all the same inputs that we had before. This orange trace here is our HODL curve as our reference. Now we have a long signal, if SOPA is greater than one, return one. We have a short signal, if SOPA is less than one, return negative one. Note that the negative here is going to pick up a short signal. We then have our long only. So this is purely looking at the previous chart that we had. Here's our long only SOPA backtest from the previous, uh, previous chart. And we can also introduce a long and short. So what we're doing here is for the input formula, now there's two ways that we could do this. We could say F3 plus F4, which is the long signal plus the short signal. It will either be one or minus one because at no point in time um, is uh, when it's above one, it's going to be either. It's a binary signal, it's gonna be zero otherwise. So we can add them together inside the actual function itself. We could also have another function F8 that summed these together and then the long short just to, um, ingested that F8 signal. So it kind of depends on user preference, but the back test can take an actual formula inside as the, um, as the input signal. So we can see this red curve here is fully invested at all times. And we can see that there are periods of time where it's gonna outperform the long only because you're essentially short during the worst phases of the bear. But you can also see that sometimes that signal takes a bit of time to actually adjust and it can underperform as well. But it really shows how we can have both of these signals essentially operating at the same time in a long and a short direction. Now it is important to note here that there can actually be leverage applied here. Um, if you were to simulate leverage, one of these signals could say go to minus two and that would be essentially a two X short. It would multiply the downside performance um, and obviously anything within those, those boundaries. So you can test both long, short and leverage within that framework. So the last one I'm gonna look at is actually a combination. So we have our on-chain signal with SOPA. We're gonna go back to just the long only position here. We're also going to look at the simple moving average crossover. So here we're gonna do it with that other format. We have two different signals. One is the SOPA signal. We're looking at is, um, is SOPA on a moving average greater than one? If so, return one. So that's our SOPA signal here in orange. We can see the blue curve here is looking at is our 20 day greater than our 50 day moving average that's going to return a blue curve now we can also then establish our combined signal strategy so i'm just going to turn both of those off and the combined strategy is essentially looking at if you have one of those conditions met 50 percent and if we have both of those conditions met it's going to return a value of one so you can see here that our combined strategy is actually summing F1, which is our um, simple moving average crossover, plus F2, F3, which is our SOPA signal, and dividing it by two. So it's simply taking the average between both of those different conditions, and thus will return a fully invested scenario when both of them are in positive territory, and it will return a 50% value when only one of them is, and when both are zero, it will essentially move directly out into cash. So with that as context, we can then see a orange curve here, which is looking at our SOPA only backtest. We've got our simple moving average only backtest, and we also have our combined strategy backtest. Here we're looking at that same signal, summing these two together, um, dividing by two, and we essentially combine both an on-chain and an off-chain strategy. So thanks for tuning in for that session. Hopefully you found that useful. You will find all of these examples as well as the charts inside a dashboard under tutorials in our dashboard section. You'll also find some Workbench examples inside Workbench itself. Um, and we do have a, a fully written write-up and a dashboard that has all of the documentation and all the breakdown of these different case studies. Um, so if you do have any questions, please feel free to reach out for us and we'll see you in the next one. Cheers.